On an episode of BBC documentary Planet Earth, David Attenborough explains the effects of when a killer fungus infects other insects. Game director Neil Druckmann must have thought, hmm, I wonder what it would be like if, instead, it infected humans. So taking a real-life insect outbreak and putting it in a post-apocalyptic story. Wow, he did his research. I mean, it scares me just explaining it. This is one of the main inspirations for The Last of Us, a third-person action-adventure survival horror set in a post-apocalyptic United States, when a mutated fungus infected the whole country in 2013, leaving it in ruins, crawling with zombies, I, I mean infected, and ruthless humans. How cheerful, considering this is developed by Naughty Dog, the same gaming company that gave us Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter. Uncharted could never reach this level of brutality, even if there are a few more F-words thrown in and a shotgun blast would blow a human body to pieces. The game was officially announced just a month after Uncharted 3 was released. Unofficially, it was hyped as an easter egg in Uncharted 3, which was actually unintentional. It had its trailers, delays, and high levels of expectations leading into 2013, when it was released worldwide, June 14, exclusive to the PlayStation 3. What really annoyed me playing this for the first time is how long it took to load. About 4 minutes just to get from the PlayStation menu to the first cutscene. I will only give it the benefit of the doubt for not taking that long again, it never loads in-game, and this shot right here clearly indicates that this is going to be something incredibly special. Oh God, what time is it? It's way past your bedtime. But it's still today. Joel is the main protagonist, but it starts with his daughter Sarah waking up in the middle of the night as the town slowly becomes hell on earth. After narrowly escaping anything infected, a soldier shoots at Joel and Sarah, and, well, let's just say that it preys on you to cry every time you watch it. Then the title screen pops up. What a prologue. One of the best of all time. It's basically telling you that it will never let up or let go. The perfect tone. Years later, the disease is really taking its toll. The country is under quarantine and survivors live in heavily policed zones. Joel and his partner Tess are working as weapon smugglers. After one hasn't paid up, they go after him only to find out that he sold the guns to the Fireflies. That is a stupid idea. After instantly approaching Firefly leader Marlene, she promises to give them their guns, double the supply in exchange for smuggling teenage girl Ellie, the only hope for humanity, as they discover that she's immune to the infected. Setting the adventure across the country trying to find a Firefly base who can use Ellie for a cure of the infected. <laughs> you ain't gonna make it. Well, I'm not really a horror movie fan, so... All I can say is that having a post-apocalyptic survival horror that's less Resident Evil, Dead Space, Left for Dead and more 28 Days Later and Children of Men, the window of opportunity is limitless and boy did they take advantage. Because there are so many strong themes like LGBT, the human condition, self-preservation, cannibalism, corruption of a child's mind, oh and a message of hope and redemption. Life goes on. The story sets itself by Axe, but it doesn't mention it. You have the prologue, Joe and Tess together, Ellie joining in, they come across other humans in different towns and cities. I mean, action adventure is one of the main genres, right? This is one of the best stories I've come across in a video game. If this were a movie, it would probably be nominated for a few Academy Awards, maybe even Best Picture. I'm serious, it's that good. I wish I could write stories with so many little details that wrap up beautifully. And the acting is so believable, it's unbelievable. Light years ahead of nearly any video game out there. This is how you gonna repay me, huh? Repay you? For all those goddamn years I took care of us. Took care? That's what you call it? I got nothing but nightmares from those years. You survived because of me! It wasn't worth it. I bring you the cure from mankind and you wanna play the pissy little brother. First time playing this, I wasn't so sure if I liked Joel. He just came across as someone who just doesn't care, one dimensional. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. Maybe the death of his daughter or the country being in ruins might have something to do with it. Or maybe he just seems to handle things in a very cool headed way. He does remind me a bit of Llewellyn Moss from No Country for Old Men. What do I know? I'm not a psychologist. But it all made sense towards the end of the game. 
and the chemistry between him and Ellie is undeniably strong. Some of the characteristics of these two were even made up by the actors portraying them. How it goes from just another stupid job Joel wanted to get over with, to a father-daughter-like relationship happens so fluently. If I get into trouble down there, you make every shot count. Yeah. I got this. When it comes to children in video games, Ellie, a teenager whose parents died at birth and has lived her whole life in a post-apocalyptic environment, is the queen of them all. Well, I'm sorry. I trust him better than I trust myself. Stop with the bullshit. What are you so afraid of? These characters will always be talked about in the highest regard. Even the supporting ones we only see for about an hour max have their fair share of moments. Wow. <laughs> all right, ready? Ow. <laughs> a blueberry hurt you? It's been a while since that boy even cracked a smile. She doesn't seem bothered by all this. The soundtrack was done primarily by Gustavo Santola. Sorry, I'm not good with pronouncing names correctly. And most of the time, it sounds like a guitar being played lightly, which is a perfect way to complement the atmosphere so incomprehensible. It's also because the guitar is one of the few musical instruments that can still be used years post-apocalypse. When the occasional jump scare occurs, most of the time there's no music or sound cue. It just happens without warning. The cues happen in-game, like when an enemy can see you. Let me demonstrate. Good. Do another once over and then head out. It's getting close to curfew. Oh shit. They're in here with us. See if you can distract them. Works like a charm. I mean, if I had something like that coming towards me, I'd be begging for a rocket launcher. Look at these things. Beware, because they can kill you with one touch. Apparently, Neil Druckmann had the chance to explain how the fungus evolved, infecting these humans, but opted instead to focus on character development. But when there are no close-by threats, you have an opportunity to immerse yourself in the surroundings. The presentation is beyond anything I've seen on the PlayStation 3. It's been a while since it was released, and now growing used to the 8th generation. It is starting to look rough around the edges, with some of the trees and grass looking just a little low res, and the frame rate getting choppy when there are too many dead enemies. The remastered version fixes that, but don't let that discourage you for a second, not even slightly. Wherever you go, it looks like a shithole that hasn't been touched for a long time. I mean, what else would it look like with everything going on? It's an incredible sight to behold. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. Man, can't deny that view. <laughs> the controls differ from the Uncharted series. Joel moves a lot slower, and it has a heavy emphasis on survival, using basic weapons and handmade items like needle bombs, Molotov cocktails, first aid kits, and scissor-bladed baseball bats. I can imagine the game designers having a lot of fun crafting these. These unique bad boys can be made on the go, finding smaller items scattered throughout the environment like alcohol, blades, or explosive powder. You can also find bolts to upgrade your guns on a weapons table, and medicine to improve your body stats like maximum health and speed. So it has a few RPG elements added to the mix. You have the basics covered, and it's not overly complicated. I am sure you will figure that out. But don't think for a second you can just kill respawning infected and max all of your stats. It's all about how you can either take down or sneak past enemies with skill and patience. You've got to familiarize yourself with the surroundings, listen to the enemy, throw heavy objects to distract them, and use as little ammo as possible. If you just go in there like a lunatic, you're not going to last very long. Unless you're very accurate with headshots. You have to be smart. Enemy waves will differ and you'll reach points that are going to take more than just a few attempts. Most of the time, it's a game of rat in the maze. Only if the rat had a coat of porcupine quills, so it had a chance to defend itself. There are probably too many moments that require stealth. It might as well be another sub-genre. But each time, the intensity keeps your eyes peeled and you're constantly working for the correct strategy to either get past or take down enemies. 
That clicking noise will keep your butt muscles clenched. Even the melee weapons have limited use. Surely I can strike an enemy with a machete at least a few hundred times before it gets blunt. But it's like that for you to be smarter in your approach. At least your sidekick isn't a useless damsel in distress. We're looking at you, Sheva from Resident Evil 5. The chemistry between these two rings true in the gameplay, because Ellie is actually useful. She gives you spare ammo, spots unsuspecting enemies, throws heavy objects at them, sometimes even kills them, and is barely vulnerable. Thanks, Ellie. And that wasn't sarcasm. You're welcome. And what would this game do without a few puzzles here and there? Don't worry, they're not cryptic to the point that you'll need a walkthrough. I'm not a big fan of stealth games because most of them are too complicated like Metal Gear Solid, which always tries to deliberately fuck with your head. But here it seems more self-explanatory. It's like the game is constantly encouraging you to keep it quiet. <laughs> After you beat the game, money can be earned completing PlayStation trophies and used to purchase bonuses like render modes, outfits and concept art, almost exactly like Uncharted. What I don't understand is when Ellie for example is wearing a Jack and Daxter shirt, that's a great shirt by the way, when it goes to the cutscenes, she's wearing her normal one, where's the consistency? That's one reason to have cutscenes in game. It took me a few hours to get going because I've recently played a lot of Uncharted games. But The Last of Us has gameplay with skyrocket levels of attention to detail. Combine this with an already top-notch narrative, you just want to keep playing until the very end. And then play it again, and again. I wouldn't blame you. Honestly, I can't tell if there's a final boss or not. I would say the fight against this guy would be the closest thing to a final boss, and even then, the game still isn't over. After Joel got stabbed by a piece of a building, Ellie was able to keep him alive and survive on her own. She runs into David, who was another survivor, only to find that he and his crew are cannibals, and the people Ellie and Joel survived through were his men. She was able to distract them from getting to Joel, but is captured and is offered to join them. I'll take that as a fuck you. In the final confrontation, it's a battle between Ellie and David in a diner. It took me a while to figure out that you meant a sneak attack from behind, but it makes sense. Again, stealth plays a factor. You have to walk around the tables, avoid broken plates, and not be in front of David because that equals instant death. Even though it's pretty challenging, each strike is a save checkpoint. I wish I had that in Uncharted 2. Then it's a button to finish him off and you know how I feel about that. But I think it was appropriate this time. It was a brutal but satisfying beating considering what David could have done to Ellie if the momentum went the other way. Then Recover Joel reaches Ellie, consoles her, and the emotions are sky high. When Joel and Ellie finally make it to Salt Lake City, Marlene reclaims Ellie for the surgery to find a cure for the infected. Maybe it was meant to be. But after Joel found out that Ellie would die during the surgery, he instantly decides, that's a bad idea, goes all out on the fireflies, and takes Ellie back for himself. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are immune. Dozens, actually. Ain't time a damn bit of good, neither. They've actually... St they've stopped looking for a cure. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. Yep. Even lie to her face. That is the kind of ice-cold selfishness you'd expect from the Godfather. This isn't the sort of horror movie twist where the villain jump scares their way back to life. It's almost the opposite. Our protagonist is the villain. Instead of doing what was right for humanity, Joel does what he wants for himself after the death of his daughter in 2013. Whatever you take away from this ending, 
It will be talked about for years to come, assuming they don't care about spoiling it for newcomers. That kind of ending doesn't just pop into your head. Okay. Believe it or not, my first impression after beating it the first time was... It was pretty good, maybe a little overrated. I don't know what was going through my head thinking that. Because after giving it a second chance, I paid extra attention and it finally hit me. The characters, strong themes, rundown cities, tight gameplay, everything about The Last of Us is a survival horror staple that nobody will ever regret playing. And I'm completely sold. I just have to give it a 10 out of 10. Forget Crash Bandicoot, forget Jack and Daxter, forget Uncharted, and more importantly, forget Way of the Warrior. This is the greatest game Naughty Dog have ever developed, and one of the greatest of all time. But not the greatest because there's no such thing, I can't stress that enough. This is also taking into account that it's the PlayStation 3 version without the Left Behind DLC, which probably deserves a review on its own. If you have that too, it only makes it even better. Whatever you buy this for, the PlayStation 3 or 4, holy shit, this is a masterpiece that every gamer should try at least once. Or miss out, your call.